Big win for you. Talk about just, you know, how it feels right now at this moment. You know, it feels really good. You know, I mean, go back to the interview I had with you before. I told everyone exactly how this was going to happen. You know, to be truthful, I knew that I could let him kind of land that sneaky jab or whatever. I have to admit, it was a little faster than I thought it would be at first. So he caught me a few times. But my idea was to let him come in, throw that jab, the right hand. His right hand's not that hard. So I knew that the jab, if I took a little steam off that, I could take the right hand and i get him to shoot. When I got him to scramble and shoot, I caught him with a couple little punches that hurt him. I don't know if he, people could tell, but they hurt him. And then I could tell he didn't want to strike after a while. I knew after the first round he would fade a lot. And then once I got that guillotine, throughout the years, everyone knows Nick Lenz has a good guillotine. So it just bail instantly. And so throughout the years, I've been trying to develop different finishes when people bail. And if you could see that once he bailed, I was like, I got this guy now. Ain't no one getting away from my guillotine anymore, you pansy ass people. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a little bit of marks, he busted you up a little bit, but you, you said you felt good in there, you felt comfortable, it didn't hurt you? Yeah, well, I mean, who cares about this? This is nonsense. We're talking about damage, real damage, and we're talking about who wins fights. You know, like I said, I knew that I could take that jab, and I knew if I took a couple jabs that I could get him to play my game. And that's what happened. Didn't get the guillotine early on, but you, you had a feeling it was coming you know, later in the fight? You know, I didn't get the guillotine on purpose because I knew that after, because I had it, you know, I knew I wasn't going to waste it. I was going to let him roll out the first time, think that he knew how to get out, and then the second time I was going to lock that bitch up and he ain't never getting away. Nice. I know you said going in, like, look, this isn't a grudge match. It's nothing like that. But with everything that happened with, you know, the medical issue last time and him talking, I mean, is this a little bit more personally satisfying? You know, I, I hate to say this, but, like, like after having a, I've always come to fight, regardless, even hurt, injured, you know, I've come, I've made mistakes in my career, but I've always come to fight. And this is like one of the first times that I had like a serious medical issue. And my old team threw it in my face. Like, hey, you're running, you're scared. Not one of them even messaged me to check on me or anything, you know? And, and I have to admit, that hurts. You know, that's supposed to be my family. And, and for everyone to just throw it under the bus, like it's not this big a deal, or like I'm afraid of Will Brooks and stuff. I mean, I mean, I have to, I'm gonna have to put my wife on lockdown because I'm telling you, if she sees Will Brooks' wife, she's gonna knock her out for talking shit. You know, I'm telling you, my wife's meaner than I am. So when it comes down to it, it was fucked up. And there's no two ways to put it. It's fucked up when your old family throws you under the bus and then says you're scared because I ain't scared of Will Brooks. I ain't scared of anyone at ATT. And just like I said, I got $50,000 I said there is nobody at ATT that can even come close to beating Nick Lance. So that's, you want a side bet with Dan Lambert. Yeah, that's what I want. Every fight, 50 grand on the table anytime. Any, any particular names to stand out from? No, I told you, I don't care. Bottom to the top, just like Mortal Kombat. <laughs>